Doctor, I think I'm going to start with you. Okay. What is sexual dysfunction? Okay, the technical definition for <laughs> sexual dysfunction is any problem that occurs during the what we call the sexual response cycle. And that actually prevents an individual or a couple to uh, enjoy satisfaction from the sexual activity. So what is the sexual... Arousal. Uh, okay. Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're a layman, so it would be nice if you come down to our level. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, by sexual arousal... Uh-huh. Um, cycle um we mean any process so we're talking about the, the different processes that take place uh -huh. from right from the arousal or excitement stage mm -hmm. to the, the 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 main activity itself okay. and also we call something uh the plateau stage and then we have the orgasm stage and finally what we call the resolution so what is the plateau stage? As for the orgasm stage, I think that we all kind of know, but what is the plateau <laughs> stage? Yeah, the plateau is when you've reached a point where the, int the penetration and all these things are going on. So that is penetration and all the activities that goes with the penetration stage is actually the plateau. And then we get to the orgasm mm -hmm. and then finally to the resolution and with men, we also call something a refractory period. What is that? That is after ejaculation, the relaxation space. Okay. Hmm. Technical right there. Exactly. <laughs> so does sexual dysfunction affect both men and women? Yeah, it does. Um, the sexual dysfunction that actually affects men is characterized by... Uh, things like desire, mm -hmm. uh, arousal, um, ejaculation, and um, uh, uh, finally, I think the orga orgasm as well. Mm -hmm. And then with women, it's it's more more or less the same. It's excitement. It's also uh, the actual act itself. But then with women, the uh, there is a problem with the pain aspect because there's something called painful uh, intercourse, mm. which mostly men, women, especially of certain age, like those in the menop at the menopausal stage of life, mm -hmm. actually experience this pain a lot. And also women who also experience things like um, uh, vaginismus, vaginismus, which is also uh, a problem within the the, uh, the vagina itself. Uh, pain mm -hmm. coming from all those stages and finally the orgasm which we say that most women don't attain orgasm during the uh, intercourse itself yes uh, we do say uh, medically that most women uh, do only enjoy the penetration and whatnot but not the actual orgasm mm. unfortunately we have about 50 no, to 70. can i say that we enjoy orgasm women enjoy orgasm <laughs> however some women do not orgasm during penetration thank you for correcting that <laughs> thank you for correcting that yes that is very true uh you do not orgasm or you don't reach the climax uh -huh. during during the um the penetration or the intercourse itself mm -hmm. so which is also another big problem because we say that about 50 to 70 percent of women do say they do have some form of orgasm and um we the rest don't have it at all during the intercourse anyway yeah. so yes so orgasmic problem and the pain and also the excitement the arousal is also what characterizes the um, sexual dysfunction in women. Right. Because I must say that I was very surprised when I read from um, clevelandclinic.org mm -hmm. that some 43% of women and 31% of men only report some degree of sexual dysfunction. To be honest, I would have thought that more men suffer from. Yes. <laughs> we do. We do. I, don't, I think the 
Cleveland probably have been a bit generous about this mm -hmm. matter because I think uh, from what we know, the little I know from my own research, especially I based lots of research on the, in the African community. And also when I went to Ghana recently, there were some studies I did. What came up, I, I just did a few things here and there. And I saw that when you take about 10 men, you, you get about six men that actually have the problem. Some form of dysfunction. Some form of dysfunction. Mm. Mm. So Cleveland was actually generous, I would say, or economical by putting these, you know, this kind of statistics. But I think it is more than that. It's just more than that. But they don't report it, you know, mm. for one reason or the other. Most you you men, mean more more men actually suffer from sexual dysfunction yes, than women? Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, okay. because um, right. Cleveland was actually economical because more men do. Okay. In actual fact, currently, I can tell you from my own uh, studies in my clinic and other parts I've been to, I can tell you about six or seven people out of ten may have it in a in a moderate or severe forms. Mm. So it's a very serious problem. So what what are some of the things that actually, you know, affect men and women in terms of sexual dysfunction? I know that you kind of touched on a little on a little bit like painful sex for yeah. women mm -hmm. and um, stuff like that. Yeah. What actually caused that? Um when it comes to if you are referring to painful sex, mm -hmm. then we are talking about women with dry vagina okay um anybody with dry vagina actually is having problems with you know uh, hormones because usually hormonal imbalances actually leads normally to this dryness so is it is it mainly menopausal or um we have different stages yes anytime a woman loses or uh, uh, the reduction there's reduction of estrogen secretion or production within a woman there is a serious uh, dysfunction within the hormonal system. So it is not necessarily a menopausal issue. Yes, it is usually menopause because that is when there is cessation of periods. I have to explain that. Mm -hmm. And also where uh, ovulation doesn't really occur very much. And also the ovaries don't really um, produce what we call estrogen. So it is actually menopause that really brings up some of the, the dryness. But then there are women too who have not reached the menopause stage, yes, but do have the dryness. And the problem is actually the same thing with est estrogen production. Mm, okay. Because if someone has something like um, premature ovarian failure, it is also going to affect the production of estrogen, which is a hormone that makes a woman a woman. <laughs> wow, that is interesting. Well, if you have only just logged in, you are listening to the Bear Talk Show with me, Adjoa, and we have Dr. Egan right here and Chris Decker right here. He is silent for a little moment, <laughs> but um, don't worry, you will be hearing from him very soon. Okay. Um, just keep your dials logged in. We will be right back. Consider that life wasted. Consider the heart of the family ripped apart. Consider the potential never realized. Are these the things you consider when you carry a knife? It's not about street cred or respect. It's about staying alive. Drop that knife and save a life. Went and slowly supporting all family and young people. What do you like for breakfast? Well, it depends what mood I'm in. If I'm happy, I like a little bit of porridge with banana because I'm feeling healthy. If I'm in a... Me, I like a bit of fruit. Nice apples, sliced apples. I love banana. a cinnamon and raisin bagel, some scrambled eggs, and a. I say nice English bit. Um, salad, fruit, and orange. I juice. like wholemeal bagel with a bit of cream cheese on it, and some bacon, and then some avocado. And on the side, I like to have fried egg with bacon with baked beans toast i normally take my cocoa Tea. yeah i'm a Ghanaian. i'm a typical Ghanaian, so i like my cocoa i'm not too sure i normally don't eat breakfast <laughs> it doesn't matter how you like your breakfast or you may not like breakfast at all but you will love the sound of your radio when the breakfast is afropolitan watch out for the new abn radio breakfast show with ifwadum and abeye bonsu ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan Radio Station.
It was a well-paying job, respectable, wearing a suit and tie every day. But I drank 24-7. Drank on the way to work, drank at work. I never could come to terms with admitting that I had an alcohol problem or a pill problem. I decided to get clean, and so I went to the Narconon program. Not only did I handle my drug addiction, I completely knew how to live life. Call Narconon today at 01435 512 460. 01435 512 460. ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan radio station. Welcome back to the Bear Talk Show with me. We are live on ABN Radio London's premier Afropolitan station. So talking about sexual dysfunction and the impact it has on relationships and marriages for that matter. And in here with me is Dr. Regan and um, Chris right here. So, Dr., we were talking about, you know, how it affects men and women <laughs> and, um, you know, to... I think we want to explore a bit more in terms of the spectrum that it covers. Mm -hmm. And so what actually is sexual dysfunction? I know that we talk about erectile dysfunction. What other stuff are mm -hmm. there that okay. comes under the umbrella of okay. Um, sexual dysfunction? Okay. If we are referring to men, then we are firstly talking about the, uh, going to talk about erection, mm -hmm. which is the first one that, and which is the major thing that most men actually um, complain about. So erectile dysfunction is inability to sustain or to achieve and sustain mm -hmm. uh, uh, firmness or firm uh, penis mm -hmm. uh, to enable a man to perform sexual intercourse in simple terms. Right. So first of all, you have to be able to achieve it, that is erection, and you also have to be able to sustain it over a certain period of time, mm -hmm. to be able to penetrate the mm. vagina, which is another thing, and stay long enough to give <laughs> satisfaction. What is long enough? <laughs> well, if How you get, long is long? If you get in for about one to three minutes, we say you are too, we, we say you are too short. Okay. So that means you've not been, you know, long enough. And uh, from, we also say that from three minutes to seven minutes, mm -hmm. we say that, yes, you've done very well. Okay. And then from seven hmm. minutes to 14 <laughs> minutes, we say you've done very, very good. Well done. Well, so any, if you can manage anything beyond 14 minutes, then you are super. <laughs> <laughs> well guys out there if you're listening and if you manage anything between what 7 to 14, 14 minutes no, you se are 7 to 14 is, for, is, is good it's we good. say you, you, you stayed long enough but then anything beyond 14 minutes yeah. then you are super well one. if you are staying more than 14 minutes I need you to call me right now <laughs> <laughs> you, for all you know you might win some kind of a trophy for that because um, that's what you're saying that you ask so I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. So, so what other thing apart from erectile dysfunction comes under sexual um, dysfunction? So the erection is one. Erectile dysfunction is number one. So you should be able to achieve and sustain mm -hmm. over a certain period and do it to the satisfaction of yourself and, and, and your partner. That's number one. So any anything short of that is an erection dysfunction. Now, the next one is also about, um, then we also talk about libido. So libidinal problems also is a very big issue because mm -hmm. some people do not have the libido or the sex drive at all. And these things happen when people have things like um, hormonal problems because we do say that when a man have a testosterone deficiency, then they face this issue of libido um, problems and libido is also another thing that most guys are actually facing so it's not only about erection but it's also about getting even the drive itself to be able to get an erection because before you can have the erection itself mm -hmm. first of all the whole thing takes place we say a, a physiology of erection actually starts from the brain so we have physical part side of it and we have the psychological or the mm. psychogenic part of it. Right. So the psychogenic 
or physiological, you know, part of the, the erection actually starts from the brain. So we say that the brain actually uses all the sensation organs, smell, uh, hearing, yeah. you know, everything, you know. And then once the arousal is achieved, now arousal actually occurs when you have seen the thing and appreciated what you're seeing, first of all. So sight mm. is very important and other factors. Then after that, mm -hmm. then the brain actually uh, conducts you know, nerve impulse and a uh, sense information. And this information goes through the nerves and also goes through the the hormones. Yeah. So once the brain sends the signal and then the signal passes through the spinal cord and goes into certain areas of, of the body, which I mentioned one or two, there is a place called the lumbosacral uh, sex centers within the along the spinal cord and the spinal cord by definition is something that is just within the uh the vertebrates the the spinal vertebrae so uh spinal cord is just weaved around the sorry the uh the Spinal cord is weaved around the spinal health or the vertebrae, the bones at the back. Okay, doctor, so, you did mention something mm -hmm. about um, the loss of drive um, mm -hmm. for for men and Good. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what about women? What actually caused that loss of drive for women? Uh, it's also the same, um, uh, what do you call it, the hormonal imbalances as well. Right. You see, um, one of the major things that actually cause uh, sex... Um, arousal or libido problems in, in both men and women is actually the hormone, as I mentioned. When men have low testosterone, they have a problem. Mm -hmm. And when women have low levels of estrogen, they have a problem. So it's actually, a, a first, a hormonal thing. And second, there's also something to do with uh, anxiety, which is a psychological thing. Right. Anxiety and depression all these things actually come to play when it comes to these things. Because we do hear about performance anxiety mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yes. Is that part of the anxiety that you're talking about? Yes, I'm talking about this part of uh, anxiety because um, if a man actually um, has had, you know, bad erection uh, in a previous relationship mm -hmm. and he's meeting a woman for the first time and he has the fear that, oh, on this occasion, I might experience the same thing I had in the previous, you know, yeah. encounter. Of course, he's actually going to have this, be anxious and feel a bit, you know, worried about these things. So normally when it happens like this, then it affects the erection itself. Because as I was saying, first, you need to have arousal. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was trying to explain before, using all those technical things <laughs> <laughs> that I know you really like to know. No, we, we just want the layman's language. Okay. <laughs> so, so, you know, so yes, arousal have to occur. But then if the hormones are playing up and uh, the psychology is also not working for the guy mm -hmm. and there's anxiety and the woman is also having because it applies to both men and women. Yeah. You see, the, the anxiety can also give rise. And anxiety may also have, a, a, could, may occur as a result of a bad relationship the woman or the man have had in the past. Okay. You see. All right. If you have only just tuned in once again, you are listening to The Bear Talk Show. We are live on ABN Radio, London's premier Afropolitan station. And yes, we are talking about sexual dysfunction and um, how it affects relationships and marriages for that matter. Studio lines are 0208-670-7300. 0208-670-7300. You could also send a WhatsApp message on 0788-7475940. And if you are abroad, you can actually call on WhatsApp on the same number, 0788-7475940. So um, what are some of the characteristics of sexual dysfunction? 
Uh, is it men or women? Um, well, okay, let's go men first and then we'll come <laughs> into women. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we mentioned uh, libido and we've also mentioned erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And the next one is uh, ejaculatory problems. Okay, how does that occur? What is that? Uh, ejaculation, uh, that is when a guy, or a man, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't actually uh, obtain ejaculation. Okay. In the course of the intercourse, it's a problem. We also have another form of ejacula ejaculatory problem, which is uh, retrograde ejaculation. When was that? Um, when, well, you see, ejaculation occurs when semen is actually passed through the urethra. The urethra mm -hmm. is the tube that is within the, um, the penis, where we also pass urine. Mm -hmm. Is the same place where we pass or we actually discharge semen okay. or sperm. So when there is a problem within the urethra, sometimes instead of the sperm to go forward, it actually retrogrades, it goes back. Oh, wow. Okay. That must be painful. Yes. So that also causes a lot of problems with, uh, with ejaculation. Mm -hmm. And another thing is about premature ejaculation, mm -hmm. which is the most talked about sexual <laughs> problem that uh, our brothers talk about. And yeah. I've, I've faced a few of them this week in my clinic here in London. Uh -huh. um, I met a, a guy who actually told me he has had this problem for a while, where his is just a very serious one because as soon as he gets into the vagina, mm -hmm. he discharges. Hmm. So he doesn't even have to do any hard work at all. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so e ejaculation problem, mm. and this premature ejaculation issue is just big as erection you, is. You doctor, is it not because um, there's so much pressure on men to perform? I, I, you remember we, we touched on this thing sometimes, yeah. but that a lot of people are, uh, a lot of women tend to, to discuss this thing where... Uh, they, some people are saying, oh, uh, if you're a man, you should be able to go longer. Okay. And so, like, mm -hmm. that hype makes some men also have that anxiety oh, very much. to want yeah. to. Very much. Uh, you see, we, we spoke about anxiety, which mm. I'm glad you yeah. brought back to that. Mm. Now, you see, to understand, to understand this particular uh, question you're asking, let us just go back to what this... Thing, how this thing actually starts. Mm. You see, erection doesn't have to, you, one doesn't have to have erection for over 30 minutes or even over 20 minutes. You see, our sisters have to understand these things because sometimes when people watch pornography, mm. you see, and they see men doing this thing over lengthy periods of time, it makes them think that, well, every man should be able it to do It kind of becomes like an that. expectation. Exactly. It kind of becomes <laughs> an expectation on every guy to, or man to do this. Yeah. But, you see, uh, we even say that sometimes porno itself is not real. It's fake. It's, it's, it's it fake, is, you know. Yeah. It's an act. And it's, it's an yeah, act. And right. also sometimes, even if it, there is any genuineness about it at all, then probably the men are given some medication or injected certain things to, to allow them it. to prolong the whole thing. But I'm trying to use this medium to advise our sisters. You see, <laughs> like I said before, if your husband or your partner is able to at least maintain, it's a very hard thing. Mm -hmm. And why I have, I, I'm saying it's hard, so at least from today, everyone can form their minds about these things. Erection is not a simple thing. Mm. First of all, blood has to flow. First of all, another thing is the brain has to also act to pass certain information yeah. to the nerves that are within the pudenda and other nerves that are within your genitals. Mm. And then something has to happen within the genital itself. We have uh, things like um, corpora co co cavernosa. Hmm, Which doctor, is, please um, come down to our level. Yeah, please. <laughs> and that, that, that tissue within, you know, because when we were kids, uh -huh. I do remember once upon a time, we used to think that uh, erection is just like having some stick inside your penis. And at some point, the stick just gets up and then that's it. 
You see, and some people were even using things like, oh, it is like iron rod. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is that. You see, it is not that simple. We have tissue, spongy tissue within the penis mm. that actually have to swell. Mm. And how does it swell? The brain sends signal to the penis when you are aroused. So psych uh, physiologically, you need to be aroused first mm. to get these signals sent by the brain through the production of certain something called neurotransmitters that will send all the information to the brain uh, to the penis and also to the heart so when your heart is not even functioning mm -hmm. well you see we say a healthy heart is a healthy penis yeah. and it is true when the heart is not functioning well it is actually going to affect blood flow and the blood, the, the, in fact, the heart has to pump blood for this to occur. And then, if the heart is performing its functions, mm -hmm. natural functions, then the blood vessels also should perform their, their functions as well. That's very interesting. I like um, what you said about a healthy heart yep. is a healthy penny. Yes. So if you're listening out there, that is uh, that is a slogan for you. A yep. healthy heart is a healthy penny. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that your heart, your heart are, is, good. is functioning exactly. very well. And then, uh -huh. if if I if I'm allowed to just finish that. Okay, portion. finish there. You see, so the heart ve blood vessels must also be working very well. Uh -huh to allow the expansion. Expansion has to occur within the arteries, which actually takes the blood flow from the heart into systemic circulation. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the smooth muscles within the penis also uh, 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 actually receive information from the brain to relax in order to allow blood to flow into the penis. So these activities must occur yeah. naturally. Mm. It's a sequence, tight sequence of activities that have to occur before even erection. Even a man can get even a little bit of erection. Hmm. Wow. Doctor, does this happen within a specific age range? Age counts a lot. Age is very, very important when it comes to sex mm -hmm. because people actually uh, experience erectile problems as they age. So we say that at age 40, about 40% 40 of men will begin to experience one form of erectile dis uh, uh, sexual dysfunction or the other. Hmm. At That's age 40, about 40% 40 of men will experience that. And um, Should they be worried when that time comes? Or is it something that, is it like a phase? Does it come and go? Um, it is something that can come and stay. Permanently. <laughs> wow. Yes, okay. it all depends on how healthy. So when we say you are health, when you are healthy, then we mean everything else is working very effectively. Mm. So if you are healthy and you are forty, you shouldn't be so much scared anyway, because of course everything is your heart. If your heart is working well, mm -hmm. if your blood vessels are good, if your brain is also functioning well, because the brain should function well for this to occur, erection. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a whole complex of events that okay. So forty years, most men will start slowing down from age forty. Mm. That is a scientific fact. However, there's a however here. Yeah. You can escape some of these things, and I'm talking about the seriousness of it, if you are healthy and you are keeping your mind and your heart healthy as well. That is very interesting. So, yes, we are talking about all things erection and um, sexual dysfunction this evening. Um, we are going to take a short breather. We will be right back. Keep your dials logged in. Consider that life wasted. Consider the heart ripped out of a family. Consider the potential never realized. Are these the things you consider when you carry a knife? It's not about street cred. It's about staying alive. Drop that knife. Save your life. Expiration with Bright every Sunday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. is just fun, it's exciting. It's a mix of contemporary RB and pop gospel music right here on ABN Radio. Enjoy great themes every Sunday evening with Bright on Mixpiration. A blend of great inspiring songs just for your Sunday evening relaxation. Tune in from 6 to 8 p.m. this and every Sunday. They're on ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan Radio Station. Tune 
Tune in to the new ABN Breakfast Show from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. The London City Show has evolved into an all-new breakfast show with sizzling slices of juicy news current affairs served with junior jumbo-sized convos on issues you should be aware of. What did I just say? The ABN Breakfast Show, the Afropolitan breakfast you can't afford to miss. This is your girl, Diana Hamilton, and you're listening to ABN Radio, <laughs> London's Afropolitan station. I love this station. So welcome back to the Bear Talk Show. We are live on ABN Radio UK, London's Afropolitan station. And yes, I did say before, we are talking about all things erection and sexual dysfunction. And so doctor has given us a lot of exposition about <laughs> some of these things. And um, wow, interesting. Um, so we've got Chris right here with us as well. Now, Chris, I'm going to come to you this time. <laughs> now, do you think that there are some kind of techniques that spouses can do to help their partners stay erect? Yeah, I think so. I think that, um, as Dr. Riley said, it takes a lot for one to gain um, arousal and then becoming hard. And so if there are problems, then you need to uh, do things that will um, tick the boxes for your spouse. So if, uh, for instance, the man is having difficulty staying, because the, the, as he rightly said, there are stages. So it could be that you have a dysfunction in the erection, or you could have a d dysfunction in staying erected. Mm -hmm. So not just only erecting, but actually being able to stay, keeping the, maintaining the erection. So if somebody has such a problem, then um, uh, the onus lies on the spouse to help uh, that person to to get over uh, this kind of problem. So if there are things you can do to help, um, then it will be great. If there's anything, like if uh, there are things that the man would like to see, um, as I said, you know, the transparent stuff, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, a bit of a bit of touch. There, there, I think there are a lot of things that um, women can do to help the man to 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 stay alive. If I should put it that way. Mm. <laughs> so, woman, this is your call. Sometimes we need to help. Somebody sends a message and says, "Boys are bread. Women have no. mercy." <laughs> no. <laughs> we will try to understand, and we will indeed have mercy on <laughs> you, men. The thing is, we it's it's a matter of education, isn't it? it if is. we don't know, mm -hmm. then obviously mm -hmm. we do not understand mm -hmm. yeah. how this whole mechanics work. Mm -hmm. But then, interestingly, we are having a bit of an eye opener right here. Yeah. So, so I think it is good. It is indeed good. Now, Doctor, um, back to you again. Can sexual dysfunction be treated? And also, do you think that it is a lot more prevalent um, within the African or sub African kind of um, region? Okay. Yes. Um, erectile dysfunction can be treated. But first of all, and that's the advice we try to give to our brothers. When I went to Ghana recently, I was invited by the GBC to, to talk about these issues and discuss treatment options. Now, one, we, one thing we know uh, is this. Most men out there do not actually seek help. Yes. You see, they don't seek help and they don't seek it at the right time. And they wait and wait and wait until the whole thing collapses. Do you think because completely. it's out of embarrassment or? It is a daunting tax for a man to talk about these things. Yeah. But from what I know about these things, because naturally, you see, some of these things, you don't cause it. You, you know, part of it is your fault anyway, because probably you're not healthy. Mm. You're not eating the, eating the right stuff. You have high cholesterol. Your blood pressure is not being treated properly mm. a whole lot of those things and there are other things like psychological aspects to the problem which although you have control you may not probably have control for instance if you're under certain form of stress if i have a patient who have who's under certain form of stress or going through what we call chronic stress one advice i give to this patient is stress is going to kill your penis you see, why do I always say those things? 
One, for uh, a man to have erection or to perform well in, in, uh, in sex, uh, first of all, you need your testosterone to be okay. Yeah. You see, you shouldn't be deficient in, in testosterone. So testosterone is actually a, a hormone that actually makes a man a man. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, all these things comes down to testosterone because it is the, the hormone that gives us our secondary uh, reproductive uh, organ, you know, characteristics, etc. It's also the one that actually helps us to to sort of produce sperm, etc., etc. So the testosterone, which also comes under something called androgen, and androgen also comes under something called corticosteroids. <laughs> All these things are there to help us to produce this uh, almighty testosterone. Mm. Now, when you come under any form of stress, and especially the stress becomes a prolonged issue, mm. what happens to you is androgen, uh, hormones such as testosterone, is actually going to be converted to something called cortisol. Right. And right. cortisol is a hormone that is used by the body to fight stress. Mm. Okay. You see. Doctor, so, we, we, we've mm -hmm. talked a bit about men. Mm -hmm. I also want to bring women in okay. because we, we you mm -hmm. did say that women yeah. also suffer from oh, sexual dysfunction and mm -hmm. we did mention a bit of painful sex and what have you. Yeah. Do you think that contraceptives also affect libido for women? Yes, it does. In fact, if you're a woman and you are taking uh contraceptive pill, mm. uh, you have to be careful. We have the double hormone con contraceptive and different types. And you see, the the medical aim of contraceptives or the technical aim for contraceptives is simply to suppress ovulation. Yeah. And to suppress the production of estrogen. These are the two things. Mm. So at least if these two things are not happening, it means pregnancy is not likely to occur. It's as simple as that. So that is why we give the name contraceptive. So it, so it is just fulfilling these two or satisfying these two aims, suppression of ovulation and, and, and the production of estrogen. Now, if you are taking a pill and you have taken it over a certain period of time, one of the things it's going to do to you is, of course, you are not going to be pregnant, which is mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. You achieve that aim. But then it is also going to cause other things because the hormones that are actually being injected into your bloodstream through that this thing, because remember that it's a uh, contraceptive pill contains synthetic form of estrogen and progesterone. Yeah. And these two hormones have to be in a certain ratio for a woman to be fertile. Now, if these things the uh, contrast, uh, uh, synthetic form has been produced to you uh, in your system and it's a suppressing, um, you know, ovulation. It is also causing other problems. Of course, a woman is going to gain weight, that weight naturally. Mm -hmm. And this weight gain is also going to lead to a whole lot of things. Within the fat tissues, we have uh, a, um, um, an enzyme called aromatase, which also converts, you know, um, estrogen into other things you see yeah. so it, it's a very complex cool cascade of events wow. so what we are trying to say is this pill actually leads to a place where libido cannot okay because where estrogen production is suppressed mm. by ovarian activity i mean a lack of proper ovarian activity yeah. it is also going to affect the way a woman feels about sex itself. Because if you have enough estrogen, you are going to have all these things that a woman needs to feel aroused. Wow. So, um, you know, before we, we've got a few more minutes before we get into the news and then go into the next hour, okay. which we will be talking about all things practical, okay. you know. <laughs> but, but before we do that, you know, can sexual dysfunction be treated. be treated? Yes, it can be treated. But first of all, we need to know the source of the problem. Mm. We need to understand underlying factors, you see. Yeah. Because we, we hear people in our community and you mentioned our community mm -hmm. the reason why the communities we come from actually experienced more 
In fact, around the world, we have over 400 million people experiencing this thing at the moment. Wow. But in our communities, because we don't report and because people don't also go for checkups and because people also don't actually, you know, um, they gain the wrong education, miseducation. Mm, mm. And also there's a, an issue of, um, there's this issue of cultural and, and, and religion, reli and all religious of that. Yes. Uh, beliefs, etc. Yeah. Those things also come to play. You see, so because of all these things, and also uh, there's something called, um, what do you call it? Self-medication. So like the aphrodisiacs, the aphrodisiacs, because and when you, and I'm all telling of that. you, when you go to Ghana <laughs> now, you see, someone asked me this question the other day that okay, but we say they say that uh, alomo has all the ingredients, the herbal ingredient for sex, uh, for uh, for for. Uh, libido and whatever but don't the direction. alcohol kill it because Thank naturally you. alcohol is not really good for very sex. good very good you you, you you said it all you see alcohol is a suppressant everybody have to understand this mm. to some extent alcohol suppresses a lot of activities within the body mm -hmm. and secondly alcohol when one is binge drinking that is over consumption of alcohol yeah can also lead to problems with vascular damages and also nerve damages mm. and remember that before you can actually get even erection in the first place your nerves have to be working efficiently and effectively your your blood vessels must also be working very well so it means that if your nerves are damaged you are not actually going to get the stimulus what about things like um cialis and okay. um what's the other one um, uh, uh, Viagra. Viagra, yeah. Well, people do buy these things a lot because the doctors themselves do give them. But um, I have to actually advise our brothers here. You see, a doctor will only give Viagra to a man uh -huh. when everything else have failed. I have to really, really sound this note of caution. We only give it to people when everything else is not working. He's tried everything. And Viagra is only for erection. Mm. Viagra is not for the other aspect of sexual dysfunction. Because mm. I mentioned arousal. You have to have libido. You have to yeah. have desire. And people only uh, is seek, seek to deal with the erection aspect alone. Of course, you can well, have it. Because the they erection. need the erection for penetration. Yes. So to them, that is the most important exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> but then that is only when if you want to just satisfy somebody within two, three minutes, and then you have it. I told the guy that look, you only need just about three minutes to just go and do this thing quickly and come back, because you Are don't you sure? have yeah, <laughs> most guys. They can't do more than five minutes. But what, the things like Viagra and the Cialis doesn't that prolong the time that you ejaculate or orgasm or what have you? It's you see, what Viagra and Cialis uh, actually have in common is mm -hmm. they actually have certain, um, you know, uh, ingredient in yeah. there called PDE5, phosphodiesterase 5. It's a very powerful enzyme. Mm -hmm. And this enzyme help the body to be able to resist, you know, uh, early ejaculation. That's all it does. So, yes, of course, with some people it works. But I can tell you that some men, with some men, it doesn't work at all. You see, I've seen people taking Viagra, but are still doing one or two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because, you see, they haven't addressed the actual problem. Right. Because I know some of these men, uh, the problem isn't actually about erection itself, but about arousal, drive. I know a man who actually, and I wouldn't encourage anyone to do this. Mm -hmm. This man was here in London. He had a wife here, and they can't do it at all. He couldn't actually perform at all. Wow. There was no erection. Erection was very, very, very soft and feeble. So for some time, up to a certain point, the man cannot do anything with the wife. And he thought he was impotent. He came to see me, and I saw what was happening. Um... He said a few things because I did psychoanalyze people as, as well, just to try to understand the problem from the psychological aspect. Now, this gentleman has a wife who was too busy. 
Mm. She works around the clock. So when she comes home, she was always tired. Doctor, and then I am going to just hurt you. We're going to take the news on top of the hour. Okay. We will be right That's back. That's a very we'll interesting continue. thing here. I'll explain that. <laughs> more news, more information. This is ABN News on the Hour. From the Sky News Centre at 10, the Russian Defence Ministry has accused the UK of staging a chemical weapons attack in Syria in an attempt to provoke conflict. The Foreign Office says it just shows how desperate Moscow is to pin the blame on anyone other than their client, President Assad's regime. US State Department spokeswoman Heather Nowert says the facts have become too inconvenient. The UK, I'm confident in saying, had absolutely nothing to do with it. It is the assessment of the US government, the British government, the French government. I can not speak on their behalf, but we've all been having conversations and sharing information, and we can say that the Syrian government was behind this attack. The UK's national security advisor says Russia has been spying on Sergei and Yulia Skripal for at least five years. The former spy and his daughter were poisoned in Salisbury last month. Sir Cliff Richard has cried in court as he told a judge he thought he was going to have a heart attack while watching a police raid on his home broadcast live on the BBC. The singer is suing the broadcaster for breach of privacy. Bomb disposal experts and police have been dealing with an incident at Peterborough Prison. An RAF bomb disposal van could be seen at the jail as a police cordon surrounded the area. Hundreds of people gathered outside Ulster Rugby Stadium earlier before their first home game since two players were acquitted of rape. They don't want Paddy Jackson and Stuart Holding to be reinstated into the team. The issue seems to be dividing opinion. Tonight is specifically a call to Ulster Rugby and the IRFU and to take action on what we see as a very worrying underbelly of sexism and misogyny. I think it's a load of nonsense. I think the guy's been tried for what they were accused of. That's it. And Chelsea have made a formal complaint to UEFA about how their fans were treated during last month's Champions League match at Barcelona. They say they've received an unprecedented number of complaints from supporters about the brutality of stewards and police. That's the latest. I'm Laura Safe. Consider that life wasted. Consider the heart ripped out of a family. Consider the potential never realised. Are these the things you consider when you carry a knife? It's not about street cred. It's about staying alive. Drop that knife, save your life. Hi, this is Rodney Hines. And I'm Michael. Join us on the Voice of Sports show each and every Saturday on ABN Radio. We'll keep you bang up to date with all the latest football scores and we'll discuss all the big talking points in the world of sport. So don't forget, join us this Saturday, 4 till 6 on ABN Radio UK. Wondering where we are off to? Well, from the 1st of May 2018, ABN TV will be moving from Sky Channel 235 to Sky Channel 195. ABN TV, your favorite black broadcaster. Tune in to the new ABN Breakfast Show from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. The London City Show has evolved into an all-new breakfast show with sizzling slices of juicy news current affairs served with junior jumbo-sized convos on issues you should be aware of. What did I just say? The ABN Breakfast Show, the Afropolitan breakfast you can't afford to miss. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy, UG Official. And right now, you're tuned into ABN Radio. Make sure you don't touch that dial. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Bear Talk Show with me, Adwa. We are live on ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan Station. And so you can give us a call on 0208-670-7300. 0208-670-7300. You could also send us a WhatsApp text or if you are abroad or want to call us on WhatsApp. Number is 0788 So discussing um sexual dysfunction in relationships and this actually involves both men mm -hmm. and women. And doctor before we took the news on the hour we are talking about mm -hmm. you know um some of the medication that people take mm -hmm. that actually kind of works but then don't work for some others for some, as well and yeah. um, please continue on that yes we're trying to say that i mean viagra and all these things that people are taking 
And some are taking it without even prescription. And that's what we call self-medication, buying from the internet and other places. Uh, some are even using stone and other things, you know. Stone. Uh, stone. There's a, 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 some something called stone. Oh, okay. That, um, <laughs> Today, the doctor is letting all the secrets you. of the yeah, men. <laughs> because, you see, my, my concern is all these things, there's no scientific evidence to show whether they work at all or how they work and what is within them that causes, you know... The, the, Especially with these herbal stuff. It's exactly. like, what do you know? What's going into it? Into it. So we, we, we are concerned. I'm concerned for the brothers who are actually buying these things indiscriminately mm. because, you see, you for all you know, it could even cause or even worsen or aggravate the problem. And I know someone who was actually taking some of this stuff that has actually caused him to lose the potency completely. Oh. Yes. So we, taking that for these eggs and all of these stuff yes. have actually killed him he killed for good. completely because, you see, he didn't know he had diabetes. Right. He didn't know he had high blood pressure. And these things were actually working against the nerves and the blood flow themselves. Mm -hmm. And he was actually unknowingly taking these things and taking them and taking them. So any woman he, he comes across, and he was a player anyway, mm -hmm. so any woman he was playing the field, all, all right. So any woman he comes across, he has to use some of these weapons. Mm -hmm. And it has gotten to a, a, a stage where it's, it's not actually getting the... So what advice would you give to these guys that are taking these, the Lomo and um, all the other bitters that are, are on the market? Okay. Because a lot of people are actually taking them. You see, first of all, if anybody listening to this program have uh, any of these problems, I mean, any of these things I've mentioned here today, you first of all have to seek help. Mm -hmm. Dr. Richard Egan is just along the high street in Lewisham. Okay. I have actually specialized in the treatment of these sexual dysfunction problems. Uh, I deal with both men and women mm -hmm. and sexual dysfunction problems. So after this program, if you want to talk to me, uh, I will advise you. And if you want to come and see me, you can just call me and I'll book an appointment for you. Okay. You see, we Could treat... Could you give us um, your email address okay. and, um, you know, so and that the, and the they can take well. it down? Okay. First of all, uh, the email is uh, Dr. 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 Richard Egan. So Dr. Dot Richard Egan, E-G-H-A-N, mm -hmm. uh, in one word. Uh, at hotmail.co.uk. So Dr. Dot Richard Egan, one word, at hotmail.co.uk. And there is another email you can use as well, and that is Radiant Life, Radiant, R A D I A N T, Life 87 at gmail.com. So Radiant Life 87 at gmail.com. Amazing. So that is Dr. Richard Egan's um, details. So if you want to contact him privately, then please, he will give it th that again before the show ends. So, you know, because I think that he's well vested in this subject. Exactly. And um, if I have time, I'll go on and on and on. <laughs> I know. And um, yeah. he will be very helpful. So if you want to contact him privately, because I know that a lot of the times people don't like to call and share their problems on the show. But yes, but feel free to contact um, Dr. Egan yes. about this. Um, I mean, if somebody wants to call and we'll give them a pseudo name, we can also... Exactly, yes, exactly. So that. please yes. give us a call as yes. well. Yes. Um, let me mention name. the numbers again. Mm -hmm. It's 0208-670-7300. 0208-670-7300. 
0800. You could also call, use the WhatsApp text on 0788-7475940. And he is right here to take all your questions that you have for him. So please do give us a call. You don't have to mention your name. You know, if you are Kojo and you want to call yourself Adjoa, that's absolutely fine. It is acceptable. Okay. And so you're talking about sexual dysfunction and the call is coming through. So we will take that call. Hi, good evening. You are on the Bear Talk Show. My name is Adra. Who am I talking to? Hello. Hello. Hi, okay. good evening. Oh, hi, good evening. Um, could you kindly bring your volume of the radio down? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who am I talking to? Yeah, you're talking to Michael. Hi, Michael. How are you? Yeah, that's too bad. Oh, thank you so much for calling. What have you got for us? Yeah, I just want to make a contribution. I think I've uh, had the doctor a little bit and uh, feel like asking one, asking one question before he goes. Is he gone already? Yeah, not too bad. He's right here, so you go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, well, just want to ask a question. Yes, go on with the question. Okay, um, is Dr. Cedar is gone? Doctor is right here. He, he's here. He's listening to you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, Doc, uh, you've done so well. I've, uh, I was in, in, in as much as I came in a little bit late, but I had a bit of your discussions. The question is, um, w w what, what is the possible um, implication of for men if you want to go on a contraceptive? So if a man wants to go on contraception, yeah. uh, contraceptive, what is the yeah, implication? Yeah, what is the possible implication? I know men uh, as well go on contraceptive. Yes, um, we, 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 we do have uh, different forms of things that men take to sort of uh, prevent them from impregnating women. Apart from condoms? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, so um, um, there, there, there are some operations that are performed for men. And uh, this operation can go uh, the other way because uh, it can it can be revived. You know, after the operation has been done, uh, they can revive the 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 um, the activity if actually they want to. But sometimes it doesn't really work for most men. Mm. So the contraception you are talking about uh, can be done. It is done through operation. There are certain operations that can be done to tighten okay. certain areas in order to stop you from, you know, um, producing sperms, etc., mm -hmm. and discharging sperm as well. But sometimes uh, it can go very bad. It can, it may not even, um, I would say that some men don't actually get the erection back after that operation. So, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, you may be lucky to get it back, but most of the time, some men, even if you can get your erection back at mm -hmm. all, it may not be as effective as it was before. So I wouldn't advise anyway. I would simply, uh, because this uh, operation, which I can use a te technical word for it, is called vasectomy. Oh, yeah. So this vasectomy, you that. just have to be very careful. Depends on who does it for you. But I, I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone because the side effects can be very bad, just like every operation. Okay. But actually, not the operation I, I heard about. I heard about um, the, 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 you can take the tablet or the injection. There is, there is there are medicines like that as well. Yeah. But you see, all these medicines, injections actually come with some side effects. I just have to really let you know. Okay. And some of the side effects that they come with uh, can be very devastating. They can be very bad. Okay. So you just have to be very careful and read about whatever it is that you are being given. Uh, make sure that you understand the procedure or whatever you are being given, you understand what is, uh, uh, it entails. Yeah. And then you, 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 so that at least you don't go and make a simple uh, pro uh, problem become a, a, a big problem. Mm. Wow, um, right, Michael, I've got to answer the question then. Yes, I think. Because I think. you are trying to prevent pregnancy, but it can just cause something else altogether. 
So my advice is you just need to understand what you are being given and whether, you know, because definitely the doctor will explain to you what those things are. And I will advise our brothers out there that if you don't understand anything about this topic we are talking about, because, you know, these things, this issue is a very delicate issue. It is. Anything to do with sexual dysfunction is delicate. Mm. So if you don't understand anything, you need to seek medical advice. Mm. You see, because self-medication is very dangerous. Those who are taking Viagra without prescription and so on, I can advise you to put an end to it because it can worsen the problem. Wow. Thank you so much for your call, Michael. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Give us a call yeah. again if you've got any other questions to oh, ask. It's a pleasure. We'll do. Thank you so Thank much. You. you guys are doing very well. Thank I'm you. still online, actually, but uh, if I've got more questions, I will call back. All right. All right Thank then. you. Bless right. you. Right. Thanks Thanks. So much. Bye for now. Bye -bye. Well, so that was Michael. Michael, thank you so much for that call. Um, I am quite... This is the first time that I've actually heard about men taking tablets as form of contraception. You know, I mean, I know about the vasectomy and mm -hmm. maybe condoms, but yeah. I did not know yeah. that so, there were tablets and injections yeah, for men like as well. Yeah, there are things like that. <laughs> things like that. But they, they come with some terrible side effects you know so wow. one has to read the the, the details very, very well, well before going into them to be honest. now chris so what are some of the things that one can do or enjoy sex without the erection because um i'm sure there are people listening out there who are probably going through this kind of problems mm. and so you know they are not really being fulfilled in bed they're not being fulfilled at home how are some of the things that one can do to enjoy sex without an erection well i think that um as discussed ultimately penetration isn't the only way to enjoy sex uh, there are so many other ways that couples can actually um, engage themselves in that will help them to enjoy sex uh, I think that even for the woman, if I'm correct, it looks like you enjoy foreplay even more than you do enjoy penetration. And you as are Dr. very correct. Yes, and as Dr. <laughs> Riley said, uh, more often than not, you, do, you don't even reach yeah. orgasm uh, during penetration. Yes. So then if, um, especially the man is having erectile dysfunction, mm. then they would have to... Uh, do other things, um, oral sex, um, having longer four plays, and you know, doing you maybe or maybe resorting to using sex toys because this day and age, there are so many uh, sex toys out there mm -hmm. that actually can help uh, people to climax or reach uh, uh, the point that they want to get to, right. Okay, and um, <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, you know, because I am worried about people out there who are thinking, somebody actually mentioned in here when we took that little breather about maybe women also do not actually help their partners relax and get them into it. What advice would you give such women? Um, we have said this time and again that especially in a black community, a lot of our women tend to shy away from sex. Mm -hmm. They tend to shy away from contributing positively uh, to sex. Mm. So they don't give feedbacks. Uh, they don't talk about sex. They don't tell us exactly what they want, how they want it, which makes the work very difficult for the man. But then if women can... And then also mm -hmm. some are just um, like dormant, they'd come and they lie down like pieces of log <laughs> and they wouldn't partake in the action that is, is, is going on. So if some women can actually gear themselves up and uh, one, contribute positively to the sex, mm -hmm. i.e. talking about it, because as I always say, what you, Ajua, likes might not be the same thing that Akosuya would like. Yeah. Uh, women are very different. You have all you all you have different gene spots, so they need <laughs> you need to tell us where your gene spot is. Some men think it's fun actually searching for it, 
Mm. I don't. I think I... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, that, it's just that excitement of treasure hunting, well, though, isn't it? It, it can be, but then, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it could also be off-putting as well. Off. Okay. Because sometimes you might, like I said, some some women like it when you you actually squeeze their nipples mm -hmm. and, you know, a bit rough. Mm -hmm. But there are some too, when you do that, it, it, you, that might be the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> and so... I think that you need to tell your man what you what you like, how you like it, you know, either during during the act or after. So even if the first time it didn't go well, you can talk about it. Tell mm -hmm. them, tell the guy, well, I think that you did well, but next time maybe I would rather you do this or you do that. So that he's also informed. So should you have this discussion after? Um, well, it depends on you. It, it depends it, in it the de process. It depends on the couple. There's no um, the hard and fast rule. rule about it. Wow. There are people who would who would tell you, "Shut up! At this moment, don't talk. I want you to be quiet." <laughs> and there are others who too would like to talk in the act. So it depends on the couple. If Actually, you want to talk someone about also it. sends a message to say that, you know, um, where is it? Let me read it again. And the person says that, well, women, sometimes you need to make a lot of noise. It gets us somebody, going. Yeah, exactly. So that is somebody's... Somebody, um, <laughs> actually, I know a couple um, where this thing came up. The man actually confided in... Oh, there's a call coming okay. through. Let me pick that call and we will... Um, Hi, good evening. You are live on Bear Talk Show. This is ABN Radio. Who am I talking to? Hi, my name is Alex. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much for calling. What have you got for us? Um, yeah, I have a question for Dr. Is it still around? Yes, Dr. Okay. is still around. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Doctor, um, a quick one. Um, I don't know if this is um, um, any... Um, the size of it going down. I didn't listen from the beginning, so I don't know whether you talked about it. No, we haven't actually mentioned that, so it's a good thing that you've brought that up. Yeah, so the size of the penis um, going down, I don't know how to put it, but is it also a, um, a, an erection problem or not? So what what are you trying to say, Alex? That um, the, if if the size of a penny is too big or too small, is that a problem? No, oh. no if if the size is say diminishing. Oh. So at one point it was this length, and then you realize that the size is going down over over over, over a period. <laughs> you remember the last week I did say about penis shrinking mm -hmm. and some people were like they actually didn't believe that penises can yeah, shrink so this is what the gentleman is saying is that, is that a sexual dysfunction when you realize that your, your penis, penis is, is shrinking? shrinking yes it, it actually forms part of what we call the sexual dysfunction itself um, it comes under size mm -hmm. and we say well, size matters in some circumstances. Size do not matter uh, uh, in others. But yes, shrinkage does occur sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that usually results from low testosterone because the hormones actually play part in the, the size of the penis itself. Right. And also, what is the normal size? Because usually we also bother ourselves about size and size and size a lot. Men, most men, I do know a, a man that came to my clinic and was re, re, uh, complaining about, oh, my penis has gone down. I just looked at him and I said, no, my brother, it's okay, it's normal. He said, no, I mean, I can see that it was bigger than this and now it's gone down. I said, oh. no. <laughs> Let me tell you, you see, when men are gaining what I would say, visceral obesity, that is the big belly, put okay. it that way. The pot belly, we call it. Uh, so they are kind of enlarging in it's size. It's enlarging in size. This thing actually uh, uh, goes inside. The penis actually goes in. So it doesn't shrink per se. It doesn't. So with some men, with others, because of scar tissue, mm -hmm. because if you do have scar tissue within the penis, mm. it can also cause uh, pathological uh, uh, shrinkage. Right. That is scar because some people do out of scar tissue resulting from an injury. 
you see a past injury that a person have actually experienced or uh, diseases like uh, syphilis or gonorrhea, any of the STIs that were not properly treated mm. can actually leave some tissue scarred. And that in eventually may lead to a condition called Pironi. Pironi's disease where the, the penis actually starts to angle, uh, angulate or, 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 you know, becomes, you know, tense either on the right uh, uh, you know, side or the left side. Oh, okay, so it's it kind of changes. It changes the, the anatomy, and it also can affect the, uh, the, the function okay. or the erection or mm -hmm. the size as well. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the same scar tissue can also cause the penis also to go in. To reduce in size as well. So, so as Alex is asking, I mean, if the size shrinks a little bit, mm -hmm. um, does do they need to be worried about it? They do uh, more. They have to because you see, if it pathologically, pathologic pathology means you know disease anyway. Mm -hmm. If uh, disease, some disease is causing that to shrink, mm -hmm. then you have to be worried. Okay, so because, so mm -hmm. basically, if if they see a bit of changes, if they In should the anatomy, seek help. The structure, they should seek help because one, sometimes you see, some men actually worry over nothing. Mm. You see, because sometimes it might be that you didn't have pot belly before, and now you have a bigger one, and now because of the pot belly that you are seeing, the thing goes in slightly. It looks like it's gone in, yeah, but might still be the same size that you used to have before. I think, so, I think it's all because of the pressure. Like I keep saying, yeah. the woman, some women will tell you straight up, this day your thing has become small. You see, we, 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 we have to advise the sisters here as well, <laughs> because you see, we have something called micro and macro sizes. Mm -hmm. You see, the micro size is anything around, uh, what do you call it, uh, 2.9, about two point. In fact, the normal penis size. Let me put it this way. Okay, um, and I'm just finding out. Should, have you answered Alex's question because he is on the yes, line? Yes, so uh, Alex. So all I'm trying to it. say is, if the penis has shrunk, it has become small, and uh, you don't seem to. I mean, it wasn't like what it used to be. Then we first of all have to actually find out. We have to investigate. So you can contact me after the program. Mm -hmm. I can show you things you need to do uh, to find out what's happening. You can also come to me and I can investigate for you just to find out whether it is a normal. Because remember that as we grow, as we age, some changes occur to the penis as well. Mm -hmm. At some point from age 50, 60 going, some men I'm do... Exp say again. I'm 37. Oh, then you are, you are too young, young for that. Yeah. Okay, so it means if you have seen any such change and you, you think it is not normal and it's not something that wasn't that wasn't there before, then I will advise you to call me after this program. Let's discuss okay. it and I'll show you what you need to do. Because okay. it might be that you may have had some STI. You see, like gonorrhea. Oh, like, say no, again? No. Not, not, not at all. all. Not at all. Not okay. At all. Then we, yeah. So I, I, I think that is best to discuss to this discuss that later offline. On. Yeah, and okay, then we, so, we'll find a solution. Yeah. So, Alex, um, you. if you're listening to the end, Dr. Can Woman. I just also say, yeah, I went to see the GP, and the GP said, it's okay. I should just do exercise. I oh, can't. okay. So I don't know whether it's psychological. It's or psychological. Or yeah, sometimes it can be psychological. As I said before, sometimes it might not be anything we have to worry about at all. It could yeah. just be that, like you were saying, the pressure, the pressure on men, you know, mm -hmm. and especially when men are watching too much pornography and see okay. too, too, you know what I'm saying, too much big yeah. penises. They tend to worry a lot about this, you know. <laughs> but if you if you allow me to explain yeah. sizes, yeah. normal penis sizes, you will know that men shouldn't even worry too much about penis size at all. Yeah. Unless otherwise, if you are a micro person whose uh, penis is, uh, uh, that is erect penis is about 3.9 inches. No, 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 no. <laughs> 3.9 inches. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll see that off air. Um, your email address again is eight seven at gmail.com. Yes, yeah. and I can even give you a number if you want. Uh, WhatsApp okay. number. 
that you can also take that as well. And in just in case, if you want to send me a WhatsApp, it's uh, 079. Three four zero. Three four zero. Yeah. Eight five. Eight five. Yeah. One five eight. One five eight. So is there a seven nine three four zero eight five one five eight? Yes, please. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor. Yes. Don't mention at all. You are welcome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still listening. So Thank right. you so I'm, much, I'm, Alex. I'm, I'm, if if you think of anything else. Number or I can call that one. Uh, you can call that number as well, yeah. or I can give you another number you can call as well. Okay, maybe he can send you a WhatsApp number and then you can communicate, Com um, you know, outside well. of yes. the show as okay. well. That's fine. Okay, so thank you so much, Alex, for your call. Mm -hmm. If you thank think of any other question, give us a call. We are right here. I will do. All okay, right, thank, thank you. you. Bye for now. <laughs> So that was Alex. I think that was a very good question because oh, yeah, it was it one is. that we were about to get into it, mm -hmm. but we didn't. We hadn't yet. Um, but yeah, sizes and yes, <laughs> sizes do shrink um, <laughs> at some point in life, I think. But then doctor is saying if they do, then you might want to check it out because who knows? It might be. A, a problem. It might or, be a problem. Yes, it sometimes be, it might not be. It might not be. Sometimes it might be psychological. And also, like you said, I mean, age actually brings a whole lot of changes to the anatomy and the physiology of the body. So if you see any such change, you need to contact us and let us just advise you on what to do. Because, you know, size, 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 you know, you can only see your proper size when your penis is erect. So if the penis is not erected, then of course you cannot see your normal natural size. Mm. But some men, you know, especially in the boarding schools, when guys go to, the men go to bathhouse and they are bathing and they see other men. They compare with, themselves. Exactly, or... with long and big ones they usually get scared and get worried about these things but we've come to know that there are two type of pennies but first of all if it is in a flaccid form don't worry about it flaccid means not erect mm. when if it is if it is non-erect don't worry it is not your normal natural size <laughs> when it is erect then of course this is where you can measure the size you have Actually. So then there so, can be an erection competition right exactly. here. Exactly. So some <laughs> men do worry, these, but it's not a big issue at all. Okay. Uh, size matter to some women. It depends on the anatomy of the ladies or the woman's vagina. Because sometimes if you can fit into, there's something called lock and key. Hmm. If I can lock into yours and you can take whatever size I have, which naturally women have that elasticity. You see, so the elasticity can take any form, any size, any length, mm. okay, provided it is not an abnormal size. Chris, we are learning some things today, <laughs> aren't we? Lock Very and key. Much lock and key. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep your dials locked in. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Consider that life wasted. Consider the heart of the family ripped apart. Consider the potential never realized. Are these the things you consider when you carry a knife? It's not about street cred or respect. It's about staying alive. Drop that knife and save a life. Went and slowly supporting all family and young people. What do you like for breakfast? Well, it depends what mood I'm in. If I'm happy, I like a little bit of porridge with banana because I'm feeling healthy. If I'm in a... Not Me, I like a bit of fruit. Nice apples, sliced apples. I a love banana. a cinnamon and raisin bagel, some scrambled eggs, and a. I say nice English bit. Um, so I like fruit and orange. I juice. like pomeo bagel with a bit of cream cheese on it and some bacon and then some avocado. And on the side, I like to have fried egg with bacon with baked beans. Toast. I normally take my cocoa. Yeah, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a typical Ghanaian, so I like my cocoa. I'm not too sure. I normally don't eat breakfast. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you like your breakfast, or you may not like breakfast at all, but you will love the sound of your radio when the breakfast is Afropolitan. Watch out for the new ABN Radio Breakfast Show with Efuadum and Abeye Bonsu. 
ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan Radio Station. The Discourse on ABN Radio, engaging our community with discerning conversation. Join me, Esther Alade, on The Discourse, where we will be redefining perspectives with authentic analysis. Join The Discourse from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on ABN Radio. This Friday and every Friday on ABN Radio, London's Afropolitan Radio Station. We're online, DAB, and the ABN Radio app. Welcome back to The Bear Talk Show with me, Adjoa Arma Apia. We are live on ABN Radio, London's premier Afropolitan station. And so, yes, we are talking about sexual dysfunction. I think that, I think that this um, program has been very educative. I mean, <laughs> Chris is sitting here. Chris has had a very easy day today. Very much so. <laughs> Doctor is here, so I don't have to say much. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think that we are learning mm. a lot of stuff um, at the moment, and I am liking it. Um, now, Chris, I, I, I'm not happy that you're having a break, so I'm coming <laughs> straight to you. Do we require a good, um, or does a good sex life require a rock-hard penetration? No, like I said, um, penetration is not the only form of um, having sex or the only way to have sex. Uh, you could do so many other things and so if if rock hard penetration is good i'm sure for the man and for the woman because if you're a man and you are able to get it rock hard mm -hmm. then um yes you would enjoy it and if the woman also gets it that way then she will also enjoy it but then if that is not happening then you need to be looking at other other ways and means of satisfying your desires so what are some other things that one can do to actually you know achieve a fulfilling and fantastic sex life whilst going through these challenges um like i did say first and foremost you need to identify some of the things apart from penetration that <laughs> excites you mm -hmm. um there are people who would anytime any day prefer um, oral sex over actual penetration. Um, if the woman is able to perform oral sex on the man, mm -hmm. some some men actually really like that. So if the guy likes that, then that could be something that you could look at. And then, as I also said, there are so many sex toys these days. Mm. So if the woman is also having issues, because as we've learned today, <laughs> women can have a lot of uh, dysfunctions. Yeah. So if the woman is having issues, then you could also look at other things. Now there are sex dolls. I don't know if Ooh. if the couple approve of something like because not every couple will approve of these things. Mm. There's 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 so much material in this in this millennium. There's so much material out there. Um, there are rings that would help vibration. Um, so many other lubricants that would help stimulation and, 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 and a whole lot. So it all depends on what the couple really wants to do. Mm. And something, some, something might excite one couple. It might not necessarily excite the other. So you just need to look around, see what will work best for you and, and go for it. Wow. So that is interesting. I mean, we have to try and find ways and means. Mm. <laughs> that is what I'll say. Now, Doctor, when you mentioned this lock and key thing, does that mean that women also have sizes? Yeah, they do. Uh, women have sizes. But the good thing about the vagina is it actually has an elasticity system within it mm -hmm. so it means that any it can actually absorb anything that comes its way mm. naturally but you see some women complain these are things that we i'd like to talk about but when it comes to sex we talk about micro penis and we also talk about 
abnormal penises. And the elasticity, of course, can take a lot. Mm. But up to some point, the woman cannot take it no more. Yeah. You see, because there are penises that naturally are very, very huge and abnormal. It needs to be said. So if a woman comes across a man that has a very long penis and also a very large penis, and she's suffering because that also causes a lot of uh, pain, what we call the spirinia. The pain that comes from this penis actually can cause, you know, anxiety in women. Mm. And most of these women who are actually facing anxiety in sex today actually are, exp uh, are facing it because they have experienced some of these things I'm talking about. Mm. A woman told me some time ago he had to stop with his boyfriend because he was just too huge for her. Even though the elasticity was good, yeah. she had a very good size, she still felt that, no, the man was just too much. So we did a topic like that. Yes, and at, <laughs> yeah, and at some point she told me that look, it got to a stage where this man has had to beg her, just be on his knees to beg him to her before they can she can even allow herself. So. Mm -hmm. And after any session, she goes through terrible Pain. pains, serious pains. Now, one of the <laughs> things that can happen to women like that who are facing these problems, if the penis is just too long especially when it is actually uh, penetration from the rear. The rear is just penetrating a woman from the back. Mm. Uh, it can actually cause a lot of problems to even the cervix or the, the mouth of the womb or the wow. neck of the womb, put it that way. Mm. So, Doctor, is, um, talking about penis sizes, is thicker and medium better than thinner and longer? <laughs> it depends. Most women like it when it is wider, the width. Okay, circumference, yes. The so circumference. That is thicker. Some women like it when it is thick uh, because, uh, according to some women I have interviewed personally, uh, it actually covers a wide area within the clitoris and the labia, the, the ma labia majoris and minorities it covers all that area mm. that circumference so they like it when it can actually expand those areas and get into of course so a woman even told me that at least with that she can the, the man can always reach her g-spot because of you know because the g-spot is always around the clitoris area if you are going to treasure hunt it <laughs> it's just around those areas so they believe that the wide ones can hit that area. And I've seen a man with a very wide one, like, um, is it um, this snake? What's the name again? Is it Anaconda? <laughs> or one of those. Very, very, very wide. Mm. And I couldn't really believe that. When I saw his girlfriend, I really felt so sorry for her because it was just too big mm. and mm. wide. You see, but I think she was enjoying it because they were always together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like I said, the, uh, our our systems do have expansion systems mm. within ex elastic systems, which can actually expand to some point to accommodate any size that comes in. Mm. And with the men, with the, those who have bigger problems, are those who go beyond what we say twelve to sixteen centimeters or four to seven point six three inches, etc the length and those with the weights that are wider than um, 4.7 to 5.2 mm. weights. Mm. Uh, most women suffer from such men okay. a lot, okay. you see. But other than that, if you're a man and you have something like um, the length of about 4.7 to about 6.3 inches, at least most women would like enjoy you because you are neither here nor there. You are not too. You are in between. You are in between. It's, it's, I think many of our sisters will accommodate that. They would like to, you know, and uh, uh, have such a guy. But if you are having the micro one, which is about three point, uh, three point six centim um, inches, then we say you have the micro. It's very very tiny mm. and small. That one, hmm. then you probably <laughs> need to seek, seek help. help. <laughs>
<laughs> that one. <laughs> and also, if you go beyond certain days, because a, a, a man was bragging about nine point something inches long, mm. and I said, no, that, that's terrible. Mm. That is also too much for any woman to take. Mm. You see, so, yeah. you know, it has to be in there, in between, you know, somewhere. Uh -huh. But then men shouldn't worry too much. If you are not a micro penis person and you are in between somewhere around this state, you know, play, um, lens I've mentioned yeah. and, and, and gets I've mentioned, then of course you should not be too worried. <laughs> See, there, there are people, there, uh -huh. there, there are also, there's also the situation where somebody could have the mighty, mighty machine and not yeah. even be able to use it well. It is true. But is somebody true. could... Because, doctor, isn't it true that those with very large, humongous mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. their erection is not actually firm? It it has been reported in so many cases. Yes, it's true. Because I've seen it in different publications, mm. in scientific publications, that that is the case. Because, you see, the tissue, the erection, the standing up and the maintain of the erection, sometimes if it is too long and big, uh, the erection in most cases, in most this thing we've seen, they, they don't strong. stand yeah. very, and yeah. they are not even very, very firm. Yeah. Most of the time. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, you are lucky to be in between in the somewhere. Middle. In the middle. <laughs> in the middle. So, you see, so those with micro penises, mm -hmm. what should they do? What can, Because someone actually said that it's not their fault that they were born with that. Mm. So, do they have to be discriminated because of their penis size? No, they are not. Because... But then what do you do if, like, you are the wife and... Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you were you didn't have sex before marriage as Christians, and then you get married, and and then you realize that oh my God, even my little finger is slightly bigger. What do you do? Do you you know how do you cope with this? The thing is, it's a very difficult. It's a catch twenty two situation. Uh, it's not. And a million dollar question. <laughs> it's not easy. Because I know, at Chris, all. you did say that um, you know there are other ways yeah. of satisfying ourselves. It does not have to be necessarily penetrative. Uh, but then I think that that is okay so. when you have enjoyed yourselves ah, for After a some while, point, yeah. and, and then this problem yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. But, but when you're starting of with marriage, it, yeah, mm. how do you deal with it? You see, this is a debatable issue because mm. I've raised this issue somewhere before. Uh -huh. Uh, as a scientist, I believe, but then it is contrary to what religion says. So yeah. I can't say much about that here. Yeah. But then I would be very pleased if a woman is allowed to see what the man has mm -hmm. before she goes before into before she goes in. But even if um, you don't, even well, if you don't see it, uh, and there are times when your courtship. You can mistakenly brush against. No, I mean, it can, it, it, is, it, is it intentionally well, well, mistaken? Intentionally or mistakenly, <laughs> because this is something that you know. There is a actually um, recently we were dealing with um, counseling a couple uh -huh. that are in a situation where uh, they are married, but the man actually hid it from the woman um, that he had problems. Okay. He's not able to to have an erection. Okay. And the woman didn't know until oh. they had he had actually they had actually settled down. And this this has become a big problem where we've been trying to talk. And that is also I will call them this, about if I'm allowed to say deception. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that you see, sex is a very important aspect of human life on this planet mm. it plays a very important very, role very, mm. you see and it's one of the things that we all need to feel satisfied and that's happy. right mm. one of the things so i think that if you could hide such a, a terrible thing from a, a wife to be yeah mm -hmm. and uh, all that i, I think is deception mm. it's not it's not Doctor, right someone has sent a message and i just mm. want to ask you he said she says that can they conceive with micro pen penises and okay. how can they penetrate if it's that small but sex is about intimacy so mm -hmm. sex connects people Good. yeah I, I agree with that bit yes. sex connects people and it's mm -hmm. about intimacy mm -hmm. but then if it's that small mm -hmm. how how do they? Because it's like with every move, it might come out. No, but like, you see, that but there are these days. These days, there are so many things out there. Um, I'm told I haven't seen it yet, uh -huh. but I'm told the Chinese have come up with something 
that you can actually put it around the penis to increase the to size. increase the size. Hmm? Yes, I haven't actually physically seen but it. Does it become but permanent or is just doing the? No, the well, it's maybe something that you can you oh, can okay. put it on. Okay. Oh, so but the thing is, when you put it on, it means it's that thing that is entering yeah, your no, woman. Plus, like no, so, no, 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 plus. So, it's so a, when it's not he just ejaculates, the, it will go through of, the of, thing obviously. and then come yes. through the woman's canal. Yeah. I think if there is anything like I haven't read about it, yeah. but if there is, I think it's good. Uh, but other than that, mm. if the micro person can <laughs> can <laughs> have erection, mm. you see, that is very important mm. because once he can get erection, and once he ha he, he has or he was endowed with mm. testicles, yeah which can produce sperm, these two things. So erection and testicles that can produce, because some spe testicles cannot produce sperm. That's, right. That's a different issue anyway. Oh, wow, okay. But if these two can perform their natural functions, mm. and she can only jump to the woman, all she has to do is just to find an appropriate position. If she loves him, you see, because if you only marry this man because of the thing down there, then you'll be disappointed. But if there is something about this man that you think that other than that thing down there, the penis, you still can love him, mm. then you can find a way to accommodate it. But isn't it a package though? It has I to mean, be. It, it is, it it is part be. of the reasons why we marry. It is it not the main reason, but, but it is part of the it's reason. It's important part of it yeah not just a part <laughs> it's very impo important part the question yeah. is you've married him like uh uh, uh chris, chris was saying yeah. you didn't know and now you've married him and you've seen the size quite disappointing so what are you gonna do maybe if you still think that there's something there that still is attractive to you ab about this man you probably will find a way to accommodate it. Yeah. And once he can get erection, if he's not getting erection, then it's a big issue. But once the erection can come on, and also once he can discharge spermatozoan mm -hmm. or sperm, yeah. then of course you would you would be able to probably um produce a baby out of it mm. okay. unfortunately you might not enjoy it uh in case if you have experienced some of these things in the past and you've seen the differences and it usually goes against our sisters who have actually had past experience with big bigger biggest <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Because if you have had experience with such people, mm. then you are not going to like this man. No. But if you are just entering into the field mm. and you haven't seen it before, yeah. done it before, then he's the mighty God to you. That's right. Provided <laughs> you don't know no other. Exactly. You don't know anybody else. <laughs> then that is fine. So I think that, that that's the only way. So if you have micro. You always have to go and hunt for the girls who haven't done it before. Mm. Then, of course, they can accommodate you. The natural elasticity is there. Everything is fine. You can get in. So, 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 what, so, what about surgery? Can such a person have surgery to when... Like penis and to, to enlargement. enlargement. Yeah. yeah, they do have, uh, well, surgical uh, you know, procedures mm. that can help to... Uh, bring it up a little bit these yeah. days. Uh, they can take some fat from somewhere, put it in there, and, you know, it does work some for, for some people. But I can tell you it's just fat tissue, and sometimes it can go bad as well. So talking about, um, like, penis enlargement and all these things um, that you could work on the penis. Oh, there's a call coming through, so let me just quickly take that. <laughs> Hi, good evening. This is the Bear Talk Show. You are live on ABN Radio. Who am I talking to? Hi there, good evening. My name is Koda um, Kente, and I want I wanted to contribute towards the show. Oh, bless you, my brother Kente. How are you doing? I'm good. Great show, by the way. Thank you so much. Okay, please, what have you got to tell us? Right, I've got a question for your, um, for your guest, please. Um, I think one of them mentioned... Um, Probably you need to try the big, bigger, the biggest. So <laughs> are they trying to say maybe it's good to try the big, bigger, biggest before trying to get into the, into the relationship? 
Well, um, yeah, well, okay, Chris, Chris says he didn't say no, that. No, I think so. Dr. Big mentioned I mean, she, that. Big, 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 yeah, I'm saying that uh, Big Bigger Biggest was um, a reference doctor made okay. in a submission. He said, if you're a lady and you've been with Big Bigger Biggest, then it means that if you meet a man who has a micro, a, a micro, small, a small penis, penis, then you are not going to enjoy exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, can I say that answer for you? Or? Uh, I, I, I think so. Okay. I think, so, but I think uh, it's an interesting topic anyway, Ajua. It's a topic that probably we need to do a part two on. Oh, bless you. Thank you so it's much. Great show, by the way. Thank yeah, you. Thank you guys. Great. Okay. Thanks so much thank for calling. So that was Kente and um, yeah, good contribution um, mm -hmm. question actually, mm -hmm. you know, so Kente thank you so much for calling and by the way Kente does his um, gospel express shows on Thursdays oh, okay. evening, so um, do tune in and listen to him, he's amazing um, so yes talking about sizes, um, well, I was just talking about how men can do pennies, enlargements and all mm -hmm. of those things, now we spoke about women and their sizes earlier well. on yeah. now if a woman has has a very like hollow mm -hmm. kind of vagina with mm -hmm. no um, vagina walls and because I, I've heard yeah because I've heard really? yeah, that, I, oh yeah, yeah I've, I've heard I've heard yeah, I've heard a happens. couple of men say that you know like you enter it and it's like you don't feel anything, anything. it's like you've just entered into like a bucket <laughs> door, you know kind of thing yeah. is there a way that they can also have surgery to kind of rectify that situation okay first of all what actually causes this uh, one of the things that we know can cause these things um one of the things is um, when the woman has an infection, mm -hmm. okay? So an infection there, like vaginitis is an infection of the vagina, and vaginismus is also one form of infection, etc. So there are so many different types of infections that can firstly change the, the structure. It can affect the size, it can affect the lubrication. And I want our brothers to, to understand this. Sometimes it's not the, the, the anatomy of the vagina that has actually expanded, mm -hmm. but it's rather the lubrication due to chemical changes within the vagina. Mm -hmm. The over lubrication. Mm -hmm. Some women produce more lubrication in their vagina than others. Well, Dr. So someone has just said something I'm going to read. I don't know how far it's true, but the person says that Caucasians have the deepest vaginas. Asians have hollow. Mexicans have loose. Black folks have tight. So, hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to big ourselves up. <laughs> well, I think we believe in ourselves it's and we good. know what, it's good. We um, have what, to. what we carry. Um, we on that note, our... Uh, Time is almost catching as you know how time goes quick when you're having fun doctor it has been amazing having you and i think that you have enlightened every one of us here in the studio and everyone that is listening because the comments that are coming through is just amazing and saying how good you are so thank you so much for joining thank me you. um chris once again thank you so much for joining me doctor gave you a leave today <laughs> i think <laughs> it, know, will, it will be but, good for this um, Thing, if you don't mind this to probably be done we will again. talk about that um, but yeah, right okay. now I am going to go into my sex tip and then um, you know take it from there today my sex tip says that um, the heart shaft right and this is what I have put down for that I say that the man lies on his back with his legs outstretched the madam kneels on top of him spreading her legs and straddling him um, by his hips whilst facing your feet. In that kneeling position, she lowers herself onto your hard rod and begins riding you at a pace and a rhythm of her own. She can also control the depth of the penetration and lean forward to change the angle for greater stimulation. With this position, she can also easily reach down to stimulate herself whilst riding you too. And with a pillow under your head, you get that 
awesome view of her backside. I mean, if you don't like this one, what exactly do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so that is my sex tape for you today. Um, again, it has been an amazing show and I have enjoyed it. Um, we will talk about whether we will do a part two of this or not. Um, but thank you so much, Dr. Egan. Do you want to quickly put your email out there again? Um, okay. You know, just in a minute, in, in a second, actually. Okay. Um, it's radiant live 87 at gmail.com and okay. also dr. dot Richard Egan e g h a n at hotmail.co.uk. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you once again for coming on the Bear Talk Show, Pleasure. and I'll see you next week. Yeah. And um, for now, have a wonderful weekend. We will be right back next week. Take care. More news, more information. This is ABN News on the Hour.